To the United Kingdom, where Liz Truss is the new Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. In the last few minutes, she met with Queen Elizabeth at Balmora Castle in Scotland and was asked to form a new government. She will now travel to Downing Street, where she is due to address the nation. She is expected to announce her cabinet later this evening. Earlier, the Queen accepted the resignation of Boris Johnson. In his final ad address as Prime Minister, he said he was proud to serve the country and called on his supporters to rally round his successor. Thank you everybody for coming out so early this morning. In only a couple of hours I will be in Balmoral to see Her Majesty the Queen. And the torch will finally be passed to a new Conservative leader. The baton will be handed over in what has unexpectedly turned out to be a relay race. They changed the rules halfway through, but never mind that now. And through that lacquered black door, a new Prime Minister will shortly go to meet a fantastic group of public servants. The people who got Brexit done. The people who delivered the fastest vaccine rollout in Europe and never forget. 70% of the entire population got a dose within six months, faster than any comparable country. That is government for you. That's this Conservative government. And I know that Liz Truss and this compassionate Conservative government will do everything we can to get people through this crisis. And this country will endure it and we will win. And if Putin thinks that he can succeed by blackmailing or bullying the British people, then he is utterly deluded. And the reason we will have those funds now and in the future is because we Conservatives understand the vital symmetry between government action and free market capitalist private sector enterprise. And for the very latest, we can cross live to Downing Street, where Arise Chief Correspondent John Cookson joins us now. Thank you for joining us, uh, John. Could you tell us more about the transfer of power from Boris Johnson to Liz Truss now? Hi guys, great to see you and great to be on uh, Newsday. Well, that transfer of power happened uh, a short time ago. Boris Johnson arrived at Balmoral Castle uh, to, for an audience with the Queen about 90 minutes ago. Uh, he had his wife Carrie with him. Now, he tendered his resignation to the Queen. Now, in theory, the Queen can refuse to accept it, but of course she, she always does. Uh, uh, they met him under the shadow of a portrait of Queen Victoria uh, and her aide, John Brown, in this drawing room. And in, in fact, there's a, a Victorian connection here because the last time uh, a Queen appointed a Prime Minister was in 1885 in, in Balmoral, uh, uh, and the Queen Victoria appointed uh, Lord, Lord Salisbury. So there's a, a, a historic background to some of this. Now, when the, all that was over and Boris Johnson had said his goodbyes, uh, then Liz, Liz Truss uh, then entered the room. Uh, the Queen, yep. who is head of state, head of the judiciary, executive, and legislature, said to the uh, to to her, "Will you form a government? Will you form my government?" To which uh, Liz Truss said, "Yes." And at that point, uh, the, the transfer of power uh, uh, happened. Uh, and uh, just for those brief moments, there was uh, there was no prime minister, but just uh, as Liz Truss said, "Yes." Then the transfer of power took place. So a historic uh, moment, uh, a page of uh, political history uh, turning here uh, in, in the United Kingdom. Uh, and uh, the uh, new Prime Minister has a massive task ahead of her when she returns to London later today. So when does Prime Minister Truss arrive in Downing Street and what can we expect from her speech? Her buzzword yesterday was certainly deliver, deliver, deliver. What can we expect from her speech today? Yeah. Well, uh, she's expected back at around uh, 4 p.m. and I can tell you already uh, some security has been uh, stepped up, certainly uh, outside in Whitehall, which adjoins uh, uh, Downing Street. Uh, she'll sweep uh, through uh, the, the gates here, uh, get out of the car and then deliver her speech to the nation uh, from a lectern. Now that's the, uh, the theory, uh, uh, but it, there's rain expected later today, so that speech might actually take place inside. So 4 p.m. is when we expect to see new Prime Minister Liz Truss. 
She'll set out a, a, a wide-ranging agenda for her new term in office. Uh, we already know that uh, uh, she's planning to uh, uh, put in place a hundred, the equivalent of a $130 billion uh, uh, pr pr uh, input into uh, the economy, uh, uh, possibly to the electricity and, and gas companies to, to freeze uh, uh, j uh, j power uh, prices for the average family to around $2,500 uh, a, a year. So we'll, we'll expect to see... Uh, and to hear a little bit more detail about that. Uh, she'll also uh, talk about uh, probably foreign policy, including uh, Ukraine, uh, no change there, uh, I suspect. And she'll also talk about how to get the economy back on its feet again, roaring inflation at the moment in the United Kingdom. And she'll set out her plans for trying to bring inflation under control. As I said, a massive task ahead for the new prime minister. Uh, and uh, uh, she needs all the support she can get, not only from a divided party, uh, uh, but also uh, from uh, supporters generally, and uh, she'll appoint her new cabinet uh, later today. Well, like you said, we know that um, Liz Truss is expected to announce her cabinet later today, but do we have any ideas who might be included and in what capacity? Well, we know already that uh, Kwasi Kwarteng is likely to be appointed as a Chancellor of the Exchequer, James Cleverly, uh, Foreign Secretary, and Suella Braverman uh, as Home Secretary, as uh, Priti Patel has now stepped down. But beyond that, we don't know uh, very much more. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, Liz Truss has to try to unite the party. She is on the, the right of centre, and the names I mentioned are her supporters and uh, of the same ilk. What she's got, got to try to do is to uh, develop a broad brush uh, a, a, a cabinet to try to get some of her proposals through. So it would be very interesting to see who the new appointees are uh, later this evening. We've been watching out for Kemi uh, Badenoch uh, uh, to see whether there's anything in store for her. Kemi, of course, born in Wimbledon but from Nigerian parents and having been brought up uh, in Nigeria, uh, no uh, cabinet position for her, but possibly a ministerial role. Uh, she was equality, ministers, uh, equality minister under Boris uh, Johnson, so uh, we'll be watching out to, to see uh, if she gets uh, 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 an office uh, in, the new, in the new government. Oh, yes, we certainly on this side will be watching out to see how she fares in the government. But we also witnessed uh, Boris Johnson's farewell message. We know halfway he, he did say, he did make a dig at those who changed the rules halfway through. Could you tell us a little bit more about his overall message? Well, that was a classic uh, Boris Johnson speech, wasn't it? Rebel rousing, uh, 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 triumphant. He talked about his, his legacy, about uh, uh, the fast rollout of COVID vaccine, the fastest in, in Europe, the fact that he got Brexit done. Uh, and he uh, pointed to all his other achievements uh, in office. However, uh, that was Boris' world. Uh, and as I say, a classic speech from him. The reality, though, is something a little different. I've touched already on uh, rampant inflation in this country, political turmoil in this country, and most of all, and, and most pressing uh, for, for almost everyone in this country, is the cost of living crisis. No mention of that except to say uh, from Boris Johnson that uh, he, he thought that the country would get through it. And uh, I sense that probably uh, Britain normally does muddle through, uh, but at what cost? We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but it was, uh, as I say, it was an emotional speech. Uh, his wife and, and supporters uh, were there to watch him and he got a, a, a round of applause at the end of it and then uh, disappeared off up to uh, Balmoral to tender his resignation uh, to the Queen. It's a very historic moment. Now, I wonder, what is the mood on the ground? What are UK citizens feeling at the moment? I think it's a mood of anticipation. I, I think the country has been through so much in recent years, uh, COVID and then uh, the energy price uh, crisis. And uh, the, the country as a whole is looking for leadership. Uh, firm decisions, 
Uh, in recent months, there have been a number of strikes by uh, railway workers, uh, uh, workers including criminal barristers, uh, um, started an indefinite strike uh, yesterday. Uh, there's talk today of a firefighter's uh, strike on the cards. So, politically speaking, there's a lot of turmoil in this country. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of worry among ordinary families as to how they're going to pay their energy bills. And so they're looking for certainty from this new prime minister. Uh, and certainly this address to the nation at around four o'clock today will uh, be a key part of uh, setting minds possibly at ease. A, a lot is, is really riding on, on Liz Truss at the moment. Now, before now, Liz Truss was the foreign secretary where she played a significant part in um, overriding parts of the Northern Ireland Protocol and responding yep. to the Ukraine war. Yep. Is she likely to be more laid back on these issues now, or do you still expect her to play a significant role in leading the process? I think her agenda very much will be domestic-focused, at least for the first few, few weeks and months, because the crisis that's facing this country at the moment is, is so profound, and the expect expectations from the people is, is so great that she, she really, to survive politically, she has to tackle those first. On the foreign agenda, it's not going to change, I don't think. Ukraine policy will stay the same. Uh, it may well be that this trust might decide at some time in the very near future, in the coming weeks, to go to Kiev herself. Boris Johnson, of course, has travelled uh, uh, at least twice uh, to Ukraine for meetings with uh, Zelensky. As far as uh, NATO is concerned, uh, Liz Truss has uh, uh, promised to increase uh, government spending by 1%, 3% uh, of gross domestic product on, on NATO, which is uh, a, a major event as far as uh, Britain's defences are concerned. But overall, uh, foreign policy will take a back seat. On Africa itself, uh, Liz Truss has spoken in the past uh, when talking about foreign aid to, to uh, countries uh, like those in Africa, that uh, she would only approve them uh, or more foreign aid if there was a trade deal involved in that. So aid for trade uh, is what she's been talking about. She was heavily criticised for that, saying that, that that wasn't fair to some desperately poor African countries. So uh, we, we've had that statement from her in the past. We'll have to see uh, how uh, she... Uh, Takes, takes that forward in the coming months and years. But as I say, the focus will definitely be on the domestic agenda rather than foreign in the very near future. Well, thank you so much for that analysis and for joining us on Newsday this afternoon, John Cookson.